What's up, Cub Gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here. We're finding the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction at point C. So I got the picture up on the screen, but I went ahead and drew this force body diagram. So let's go ahead and finish this force body diagram. So C is a pin. So C is going to have a vertical and horizontal component. So this is C of Y and then C of X. I'm just drawing them in the positive direction. And so is A of Y. A of Y has a, a of Y and A of X. So what are we going to do, right? So we have two unknowns in each direction leaving us with four unknowns. That's gonna to be too many unknowns to solve. So if we wanna find at C of Y and C of X, well, we're gonna to have to simplify this to an easier system. So what we can do is we can basically get rid of B, A. We can get rid of this and replace it with one force instead of two forces. So let's go ahead and draw that. What's that gonna look like? So now we're just looking at B, C, which is this L-shaped rod. So we have C here, goes over about three feet and then down about one foot. And then there's B. So of course this is one meter, this is one meter, this is two meters. We still have this 400 Newton force pushing down. I'm gonna draw it back here. And then now AB is gonna be replaced with a different rod that's acting on BC. So AB is gonna push this way. It's gonna make an action that's pushing like this. It's gonna push in that direction. So we're gonna draw that force, right? So this is force AB. It's pushing at the same angle that AB is. And we know that this ratio or this triangle has a ratio. It goes over three meters. It goes up one meter. Right? This is three meters across, that's one meter up. And then so if you do um, Pythagoras theorem, you can find that the hypotenuse of this is square root of 10. And yeah, so that's what we have here. So now we have this system. Uh, don't forget our C of Y and C of X. But now we have three forces. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a lot easier to do because we can have three equations for these three unknowns. So let's do it. So where do we want to start? So we want to start by finding force AB instead of finding C of Y or C of X. If we find force AB, then it's going to be really easy to do some of the forces in the Y and some of the forces in the X. We don't have to do any big systems of equations or anything. So let's take the moment around C. If we take the moment around C, then C of Y and C of X are going to drop out, and it's just going to be force AB and this 400 Newton force. So what's that equation going to look like? So if you do some of the forces, or some of the moments around C, we know it's going to be equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. And so we have this 400 Newton force that's pushing downward here. It's going to make us want to rotate just like that. It's going to go counterclockwise. So it's going to be a positive 400 times its distance away, which is 2. If you know how to do the moments, uh, it should be pretty easy at this point. So then we have force AB. So force AB acts at an angle, so we're going to have to do the X and the Y. So let's start with the X. How about the X? So the X is going to push this way. So if we're pushing horizontally at B, it's going to make us kind of want to rotate uh, clockwise. So it's going to be subtracting the, uh, the X component. So force AB. So if we're finding the X component of force AB, we're going to take the x and then divided by the hypotenuse. So it's going to be 3 over square root of 10. And then if we're doing the x component, we're going to multiply it by the distance in the y direction. So its distance in the y direction away from c is just 1 meter down. So it's just going to be times 1. So then if we're looking at in the y direction, so the y direction is pushing this way. So of course, if we're pushing this way, it's going to make us want to rotate clockwise. So that's going to be another subtraction. So minus force ab again. And then this time its ratio is 1 over square root of 10. And then its distance now, because we're doing the y, its distance in the x direction is this 2 plus 1 meters, which is 3 meters. And then also, we have this moment that I totally forgot to bring over. This is an 800 uh, Newton meter force. Right? So if we have this 800 Newton meters, we have to. Uh, Make sure to add that, so it's going counterclockwise, so that's going to be added as well, so it's plus 800. So there we go, now we have it all. So of course we want to group up the force ABs, so how are we going to do that? Well, so let's keep this equal to zero, so the 400 and the 800 are going to add together to get 1600, and then minus force AB, so we're going to factor out the force AB, so these two are it's going to factor out, and then it's going to be 3 over square root of 10, plus 3 over square root of 10. So now it's just really easy to solve. You're going to add this over and then divide by the numerator or denominator, and you're going to get that. Let me draw it over here. Force AB is equal to 843 newtons.
So that's how you do that. So let's go ahead and find uh, c of y and c of x. So now this is going to be really easy to find c of y and c of x. All we have to do is sum of the forces, and we know how to do that. So let's find c of y, sum of the forces in the y direction. We know it's equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. So it's going to be force AB, and then it's vertical component, so 1 over square root of 10. And then c of y, so plus c of y. Uh, oh, and then we have this 400 newton force. That's what I was forgetting. So then minus 400, of course. So okay, we're gonna multiply, we're gonna put c o c y over on the other side. So it'll be c o y, and then there's gonna be a negative sign now. So it's gonna be minus force a b. So we found that is 843 times one over square root of 10 plus 400. Do the math on that. You'll get c of y is a positive number, which means it's pointing upward, like we said it was, 133 newtons pointing upwards. Some of the forces in the x direction, now to find c of x. We know it's equal to zero. And so force a, b points in the negative x direction, so it's gonna be minus f, a, b. And then it's three over square root of 10. And then c of x points in the positive direction, so plus c of x. So of course you just move c of x over, and you get c of x is equal to 800 newtons, flat. And then we know that it's pointing to the right, because that's what we said, and it's a positive number. So there you go, so that's how you solve this problem. It's really not that tricky, it's just about knowing where to take the cut. And if you do enough of these problems, it's just going to become more like clockwork. Um, so if you have any trouble, feel free to check out my channel. I have a whole bunch of videos on these kind of topics, uh, and I think I'll be able to help you. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.